Namo Adidafa. Good morning. Thank you for joining me this Friday for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The fifth wonderful precept. Aware of the suffering caused by unmindful consumption, I vow to cultivate good health, both physical and mental, for myself, my family, and my society, by practicing mindful eating, drinking, and consuming. I will ingest only items that preserve peace, well-being, and joy in my body, in my consciousness, and in the collective body and consciousness of my family and society. I am determined not to use alcohol or any other items that contain toxins, such as certain TV programs, magazines, books, films, and conversations. I am aware that to damage my body or my consciousness with these poisons is to betray my ancestors, my parents, my society, and future generations. I will work to transform violence, fear, anger, and confusion in myself and in society by practicing a diet for myself and for society. I understand that a proper diet is crucial for self-transformation and the transformation of society. Today we're finishing the section on relating to others as to myself from Ajahn Suchito's Kama and the End of Kama. For this, we attune to the bodily experience of sitting or standing here. That has a grounding effect. The body can't proliferate. It just simply tells us where we are without judgment, analysis, or alternatives. Then there's the heart sense to establish goodwill towards oneself. However, both body and heart sense also need to be specific, and for this, there's the rational attention which can focus on what steadies the body and uplifts the heart. This is, again, just simple stuff, such as attuning to posture or some some recollection of the Buddha or of spiritual friends. The main point is to do it, to trust that simplicity above one's powerful and fascinating proliferations. And to do that, rather than figure oneself out, or create a huge psychodrama of personal history. So we train the rational mind to be a witness of our comic tendencies, rather than an analyst or storyteller. We simply witness the bodily aspect of our experience, which can't create the stories that the heart can. Then we can bring body and heart together in a supportive way, by acknowledging that right now the body is free from harm, intrusion or obstruction and then encouraging the heart to really get the sense of that maybe there's discomfort maybe there's tension in the face temples chest and abdomen but somewhere in the bodily sense the end of an in-breath or in the pressure of the soles of your feet there's a reference to being at ease if we relate to that balanced ease in the body it brings us into the balance of our minds And it's only from that basis that we can get a feel, through the tangle of anxieties and mood swings, of a simple thread of emotional ease and psychological space. It's a shift from being tense or on guard to something more trusting, and it's through attending to this that we can step back from the biases and old narratives. Healing is a natural result of finding true balance. As we find balance and the energy settles, we can extend the quality of that trust and benevolent intent into all the tissues and structures of the body, then extend that into the space around us. May all this be free from harm or stress. We can then more specifically extend that to impressions of other people, especially those who mean a lot to us, both good and bad, 
either friends or people we have difficulties with. In this way, we share value, forgive, appreciate, and empathize. It's good to be direct and specific. Practice can't be based on a view that of what I am and what others should be. Instead, it takes the acknowledgement of the specific events and mood tones of one's mind. At this moment, the feeling is this. The impression is this. It's really just this agitation or hurt or want, and it's just like anyone else's. At that point, we can be with that and not create self around it. And so it is with others' behavior as it moves our minds. The feeling is this. The impression is this. I don't have to pick up their actions. May they be released from it. Rather than embed self or others in comma, we learn to forgive or acknowledge with gratitude, but always with the spaciousness to release them from projections. This is equanimity. This is what is needed to be able to share one's practice with others. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me this morning. Hope you have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back again for daily practice check-ins on Monday.